the Jibang Polo Club. It was somewhere up the country in a land of rock and scrub that they formed an institution called the Jibang Polo Club. They were long and wiry natives from the rugged mountainside. And the horse was never saddled that the Jibos couldn't ride. But their style of playing polo was irregular and rash. They had mighty little polish, but a mighty lot of dash. And they rode on mountain ponies that were muscular and strong, though their coats were quite unpolished and their manes and tails were long. And they used to train those ponies wheeling cattle in the scrub. They were demons, were the members of the Jibung Polo Club. It was somewhere down the country in a city smoke and steam that a polo club existed called the Cuff and Collar Team. As a social institution, it was a marvellous success and its members were distinguished by exclusiveness and dress. They had natty little ponies that were nice and smooth and sleek for their cultivated owners only rode them once a week. So they started up the country in pursuit of sport and fame for they meant to show those jibungs how they ought to play the game and they took their valets with them just to give their boots a rub ere they started operations on the jibung polo club. Well, you people can imagine how the contest ebbed and flowed. When those jibung boys got going, it was time to clear the road and the game was so terrific that ere half time was gone, one spectator's leg was broken just from merely looking on for they waddied one another till the plane was strewn with dead, and the scores were kept so even that they neither got ahead, till the cuff and collar captain, when he tumbled off to die, was the last surviving player, so the game was called a tie. Then the captain of the G-Bungs rose him slowly from the ground. Though his wounds were mostly mortal, he fiercely gazed around. There was no one to oppose him, all the rest were in a trance. So he scrambled on his pony for his last expiring chance, for he meant to make an effort to gain victory for his side. And he struck at goal and missed it. Then he tumbled off and died. By the old Campaspe River, where the breezes shake the grass, there's a row of little tombstones that the stockmen never pass, for they bear a sad inscription saying, Stranger, drop a tear. For the cuff and collar players and the G-Bung boys lie here. And on misty, moonlit evenings, while the dingoes howl around, you can see their shadows flitting down that phantom polo ground. You can hear the loud collisions as the flying players meet and the rattle of their mallets and the rush of ponies' feet till the terrified spectator rides like blazes for the pub. He's been haunted by the spectres of the G-Bung Polo Club. Banjo Patterson. (laughs) 